Thank you so much for joining us, Reverend Yearwood. A couple questions to ask you about your youth and about advice you might have for young people today. We'll start with the first one. What events or beliefs in your youth led you to become an activist? Well, the events and beliefs that led me to become an activist are clearly my parents. Um, my mother and father were activists themselves. They were also academics, and so they both were teachers. Um, my mom taught psychology, and my dad, my dad taught African American studies. Um, and so, being around them um, from, a, from a small child and seeing them use their work was just a very powerful, powerful thing. And so, I think that um, that was probably just the, the background. But then when I got into college, um, I became the student body president at the University of Michigan, Columbia, and began to fight for a DC statehood. So in 1993, as a student body president, um, was leading the students and many others to fight for representation, because we believe that taxation, that representation is not fair. So that was probably my first moment, I guess, when I was out there in the streets and Risking arrest was for D.C. statehood back in 1993. And that's still happening today. It, it is. It's actually full circle. That's, that's the amazing part about it, that uh, we, in, in that time, from 1993 up until uh, today, really almost this time today, 2020, um, we just, they just voted. And for the first time, D.C. voted overwhelmingly to receive statehood in the House. So we're excited. That's still the fight. So I'm excited that we will see D.C. become the 51st century. So for all the young people, uh, it may not happen on the first go, but clearly if you hang in there, you will see justice come soon enough. What continues to motivate you to be an activist? What guides you, gives you courage? Well, for me, what gives me courage is two things. One, it's seeing humanity continuing to fight. I believe that organized people beat organized money every single time. And so seeing people organize and come together despite tremendous odds, this gives me hope. And then obviously for me, I think that from a spiritual standpoint, I think that just having something to anchor you it's very important. It doesn't matter on your religious beliefs. You may have different ones or you may have a different type of way of thinking about that. But it is important to have something to anchor. I think you cannot pull on yourself. If you believe that you are the only one who can make this happen, or you're the only one who can make this change, it will literally eat inside of you. Um, and it will literally make you not productive for the movement. And so I think that you have to be have something outside of your family, it could be nature, it could be, it could be spirituality, but it has to be something outside of yourself that anchors you. What advice do you have for a youth activist today? Well, for youth activists today, um, many of your parents or grandparents fought for equality in the 20th century. But now you're not only fighting for equality, but you're fighting for existence. I think that's the one thing you have to realize is that the stakes are higher. But despite those stakes being higher, you can't give up. So the one thing I would tell you as a young person or youth activist is never give up and really make sure that you work together. Um, that's the importance of institutions, but just in general, you, you work together as a, with a common goal, you support one another. And for me, the one of the most important things that carry that any activist must have in their toolbox is love. If you don't have love, if you don't have love for what you're fighting for, if you don't have love for your common uh, man and woman, if you don't have love for those who don't look like you or appear to be you, if you don't have love, then you can't do this work, to be honest. You have to have love to be successful, and you must have love to see, ultimately, the victory of undoing the injustice that got you into this work to begin with. I think particularly for those of us who get a little older <laughs> in this movement, I think we realize that um, energy and passion is definitely needed. But love is the thing that I think that um, you need to carry yourself on, but you need it to just simply for us to create the world that we want to see. I think ultimately, I tell many people, 
that when all this is over with, if we have torn down statues, if we torn down structures, but we haven't literally brought up love, then we then we literally haven't done our job at all. So ultimately, it's our job actually is to reimagine a society that's not extractive, that's not one that looks upon, that is trying to demoralize or hurt people, but the one that's based upon love. And that society is a society that wins. Thank you so much. Uh,